Hi there and welcome to another episode of FM Tactics. You're back here with me on a show which sees Gloucester using tactics created by the community or myself and uh, we attempt to get Gloucester as high up the table as possible. Hopefully they win the title. Uh, they've been chasing Manchester United. It's been, it's been close this last couple of seasons, but this season is the closest I've seen them. We are just a point away if we convert this game in hand and against Manchester United with a very um, tempting match at home left. However, our run in the FA Cup was uh, rudely interrupted by Bristol City, who knocked us out of the FA Cup. For the first time, we were out of the FA Cup. Long ago, knocked out of the third round, which is a bit of a disappointment. I almost thought we were going to be going out of the League Cup too. A 1-0 defeat at home to away to um, Norwich. Or was it West Ham? West Ham, yes. And uh, But we bounced back. We beat them, we beat them in the... Uh, in the return leg, but guess what? I started using. I started using a rather exciting looking. It's a very very strange system. I've been experimenting with for myself. Uh, it's two halfbacks. Uh, sorry, two central defenders with a halfback. Both of these are actually ball playing defenders on cover. I got two wing backs here. I got a central midfield on attack. I've got a ball winning midfield over here. I've got a, a trident attack pattern going on over here with this guy actually tucking in to be like a playmaker with the option of me converting this into an inverted wing back if I choose to convert him. It was pretty fun. Uh, however, uh, used it for three games. Uh, we beat Crystal Palace as well using the same tactic and then uh, I switched to a 4-1-4-1 against Liverpool and we won this as well. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. They're racing. Uh, we're keeping in touch with the leaders and right now we have this big match against Tottenham Hotspur coming up. So I received this tactic from the Steam Workshop. It comes from Michael Scott. It's a strikeless system. Now there are so many ways to play this game and that's the cool thing about the game is that you, you can either opt to play the game with uh, no TIs and PIs. Basically, you let the roles do the talking. So that's one cool way of playing the game. You can. Um, there's no necessity for you to go out there and use TIs or PIs. You can still get away with it. If, you're, if you have done a really good job of fitting the right place into the right roles and you have given a good thought to the combinations on the pitch. And then you have the other kind of manager, a bit more peppish or a bit more like a bit more of a micromanager. You specifically tell each player on the pitch exactly what to do, and then you put them into a system which is governed by a lot of TIs. Now, I like playing that way as well because it allow, I'm a stickler for micromanaging tactics because I like to. See I like them to play exactly the way I want them to play. I don't want to be surprised by goals, but you know, or the kind of goals that they score. So uh, that's another way of playing. Now, strikeless systems have certain things that you need to achieve in a game, right? So you got you got to set them up in such a way that they can do well. Uh, the first rule of a strikeless system is that you need space. You need space behind a defensive line. You got to draw teams out. Uh, if you're camping, strikeless systems are not particularly good at camping. They are. They're not particularly good at playing against teams that are playing with a deep defensive line or sitting back very deep and not giving any room. So strikeless systems encourage other teams to come and attack them while they go out and attack. Uh, re uh, they go out and try to take advantage of the space that these systems uh, allow. So um, I like I do like strikeless systems a lot. I have used them and I I, I think that they are re still relevant in the game. However, there are going to be some strikeless systems that don't work. And the idea here is to understand why strikeless systems work. So the first thing you have to understand is if you play a strikeless system, you, ideally you want to be drawing teams out. So if you can draw them out, you hit them so hard, they won't see it coming. So that's the first thing. Secondly, you need... The good thing about strikeless system is that if you if you have a team with acceleration off the ball, it's a deadly combination because this is where strikeless systems are going to be really good at because they, they, you need the kind of players that have these qualities in them so that they can move the opposition around, unlocking them. And ex with acceleration, what you're going to have is a team that when they sit back and when they hit them on the break, they've got the acceleration to get behind the defensive line. They've got acceleration to find themselves in space. And they have the acceleration to come back if they need to. So acceleration of the ball qualities that I would definitely go with in any striker system. So here we are going to take a look at Michael Scott's tactic. First up, let's take a look at his team instructions. Now on a broader level, he's gone with uh, quite a few team instructions. 
Um, he's he's gone to sit slightly deeper, which makes sense. He's also gone narrow, which is um, he's playing a four three three very narrow. So he wants to attack in a narrow configuration so that he can pass the. It's easier for him to pass the ball. Um, with prevention of goalkeeper distribution, he wants his uh, back line to put a lot of pressure on the fullbacks. He wants to uh, between the fullbacks and the goalkeeper, so he's encouraging them to press hard. Uh, he's got this shout for building up, which is exploit in the middle, um, which is which kind of like to me, at least to me, okay, it kind of limits the way he's going to attack. So he wants them to just charge through the middle and pass into space, which is a shout that encourages a team to look for players in uh, open spaces that requires you to play through balls, which are a risky pass. And um, if you find yourself losing possession, this is a shout that's usually the culprit. Uh, f in terms of his creative freedom, which I find very surprising, he's opted to go for being more expressive. Now, this increases the creative freedom for a side. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be like... It's, it's like the... It's telling a play. It's telling a team to use more of their use more vision and flair. Now, is it gonna make the team play like Brazil or some really superb side? It depends on whether they have the technical skills to play that way. However, if you're playing with a poor side and you're playing with a side that is not very good, this is actually not a bad shot to use because. Um, Poor sides already have low creative freedom. So when you tell them to be more expressive, you're telling them to be a bit more imaginative. It's like telling a kid who's never drawn a picture of a cow to tell him, draw, you know, tell him to imagine a cow. So he's like, he's if he has never drawn a picture of a cow, he's not going to, some people won't even try. But here you're telling them to be a bit more expressive. So you're asking them to try to be a bit more creative. So you're asking him to try to draw a version of a cow that he thinks could be true. So here, this is, this is not a bad shot for you to use with the poor side, okay? But I'm not. We are not. Uh, we're not very bad. So we are above average in the league. So this is not a shot I'm going to be using. But we'll see how this shot looks like when we play because I'm more akin to using Rome from positions because for my team, we already have creative freedom. We have. We 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 know that we have a bit of a ta reasonably talented squad. But what I want from my team is for them to explore the off the ball. I want them to explore their movement. So a roam from positions is actually a much better shot for my team to use because instead of using be more expressive, I'd rather go for roam from positions for my specific team. Uh, finally, we got run at defense. This is a dirty, dirty shot, you, need, you evil, evil person. Because you've got such a congestion going on over here, you could, you're just going to get the AI. The AI is just going to get sent off. So now let's see what the ass man reckons our team should be. So our ass man has gone for some... Uh, Players uh, in the form of Lopez, Germano, Barkley. This is evil. We are not going to use these players. We got Webster and Gomez, Mr. Slowpoke, and Mr. Good Defender. So we'll swap them around. In midfield, I agree with the S man completely. Uh, up front, we've got Lopez, Germano, and Barkley. Now Germano is the the genius in my team, who can pass. He's got good acceleration. Barkley is a bit of a Barkley is a bit old. I'm going to put Germano on the right because this will allow me to pull Lopez into the middle and allow also give me the option of playing Zé Gomez because I want Zé Gomez to play. Zé Gomez, uh, he's got, he, he has acceleration. He's got very good off the ball and uh, his passing is okay. His decisions is fine. He does come back to defend. I've noticed that as well. He's a very determined player. So when we are in trouble, he does get back. So these, these are the players I'm going to be using in my system. I'm not going to make any changes. But if I do make changes to this system, it won't be to PIs. It'll just be to shouts. So Tottenham Hotspur are most likely going to be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. And uh, I'm going to have to make sure that we have... The thing about this tactic that concerns me a bit is a lot of the... Um, hard tackling that's going on all over the pitch. Sometimes I do believe that you want to leave you want to leave your players to decide when they should be uh, doing the hard tackling because once they have decent attributes, you can actually allow the roles to play themselves out. And uh, here we have one, two, three, three players here on hard tackling. Frankly, you have literally the whole team hard tackling except for maybe these two. Everybody else is tackling hard. So we've got a few players to concern ourselves with and I'm a bit concerned that uh, he picks up a yellow card. 
Almeido. Hajek, first hard challenge on the flanks. Tackling hard does have its bonuses when you're trying to protect your flanks, I guess. Uh, we got Lopez, Gomez and Germano. Uh, we are... I'm looking to see whether we can s uh, highlight the emerges of us um, moving the ball from defense into attack. Germano with the free kick into the wall it goes. Plays the ball back. Now to Mafio. Out to Webster. Now to Moore. Back to Almedo. Very narrow. It's a, You can see how narrow the configuration is. Colado inside the box. He's not a finisher. It makes... Uh, it uh, encourages me to think like, okay, maybe if I have players who can score as well, more and call, uh, the two ball-winning midfielders, they're going to get into the box. So you want to look for players as well who can, who have who have the ability to finish the ball because so many of these players will be able to score then. Almedo to Colado, back to Webster, to Germano. Germano holds the ball back, feeds it to Colado. That is Zigo Mesh shoots wild. Um, I'm getting a lot of the thing about my team is this. We don't need the extra creativity because uh, if I was a poor side, maybe I might look at that. But we're uh, among the top five clubs in England at the moment. And I would rather get my players to roam from positions. Ah, oh, it's a penalty. Deli Ali committing a penalty against Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez, please convert the penalty. It's early. Uh, Deli Ali. Under a lot of pressure. Zay Gomez has to go and pick up the ball. What's going on with my ball boys at the Webb Stadium? And a hush falls over the stadium as Zay Gomez steps up. And coolly puts it past the keeper, sending the keeper the wrong way. Yes, uh, that's the first goal. Okay, not bad still. Uh, that was a pretty good move from the wing, uh, from the wings, from the fullbacks to create the cross which uh, Zay Gomez com uh, which ended up in a penalty which Zay Gomez com completed. Henri to Zorzetto. Zorzetto. What a name. Okay, okay, that's one sliding monster of an attempted tackle by Moore. See, this is the part that gets me very nervous. Ball winning midfielders on support. They have hard tackling. DLP on defense has hard tackling. My goodness, I'm, I'm really nervous because I don't like so many players tackling hard. I mean, yes, it's an aggressive form of uh, football, but uh, it's also dangerous for my team. Germano inside the box, shoots at Pickford. Again, um, so-so opportunity. Uh, it's because we're exploiting the middle. Everybody's like trying to run into the middle and try to create goal-scoring opportunities. And I'd rather we work the ball, move them around, uh, it, we're lucky we're playing against Spurs. Imagine if this was a double DM configuration for their formation. Then I'd really have to try and create opportunities. And I don't think asking my players to express themselves is going to help. Okay, Frantisek Hajek is already picked up a yellow card. So we're going to have to look here and tell him not to tackle hard. I'm going to tell Mafia not to tackle hard. I'm going to tell Omiro not to tackle I'm just going to remove all these tackle hardest. I don't need extra tackling harder. Please, thank you very much. Uh, Zé Gomez has been is given a warning. Thank you very much. Okay, um, sixty percent possession. Not too bad. We pass into space. Even that's probably because our players and this is a narrow system, so my players can actually find themselves. It's like, hey, he's just there. He's just like two feet away from me. I can just give him the ball. All right, Butlin with a goal kick. Long and true. It goes to Zé Gomez. Hajek picks it up more to Lopez. Lopez out to Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez tries a creative flick over the top. Colado to Olmedo. Olmedo back to Moore. Moore has options. There's no way he's not going to be able to pass this ball. Hajek back to Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez finds Lopez. Lopez to Germano to Colado. Colado shoots. Second attempt. Again, that's twice that Colado has found, him, found that he can break right through. What do I do? Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Almedo will switch to Colado now. Alright, there, there is a possibility that Almedo might be might have better finishing than Colado. So we're going to push him forward. Okay, uh, Colado on the other hand is, 
he, I don't want him to tackle harder. That's good because he will chop players down. But Spasioli, Colado marking beautifully. Zé Gomez skips past one charge to Almedo. Now to Germano. Germano shoots and is wild. All right, uh, 31 minutes in, still 1-0. I don't see a lot of movement in the final third. That's the only downside. I see a lot of running, but not a lot of movement. More to Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez cleared. Webster reads the danger. Deli Ali can't. Colado comes up. Trumps with that. Mafio. I hate. Should I say Trumps, man? Lopez to Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez loses up. Olmedo there. Oh, what a strike from Olmedo. Now that is a player that wants trying to get into the uh, goal scoring opportunities. Olmedo can score. He's got decent finishing. I won't say great, but decent. Spurs have only had one shot on goal. This has been us camping. We should be scoring more goals, actually. Zosetto uh, to Chronic. But so far, in spite of uh, the chances that we have created, we have not created... I, I won't say that we have created really good chances yet. So we'll have to wait and see Philippe Anderson now. Into the box, Bothwick Jackson rising up and clearing the ball from dan to danger, out of danger rather. All right, uh, coming to the end of the first half. Not going to change shape and uh, mentality. Almedo to Germano. Germano plays it back to Zé Gomez, to Lopez. Lopez to Moore. To Zé Gomez. Zé Gomez loses out. Hajek comes up, picks up the pieces, but he cannot. Okay, so far, not seeing very much. I'm going to make a tweak to the system. We've played enough of this in the first half. We're going to change it to... I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go and start playing like this. My team has the ability to unlock sides. We'll still pass into space, draw from positions, and work ball into box when we get into the final third. All right. Colado is already picked up a yellow card. Moore has also picked up a yellow card. Now it's only Almedo left. Uh, I, I'm three yellow cards away from being fined from the Premiership. From the FA. Yeah, the Football Association. We're going to make a substitution as well. I'm going to take uh, Germano and put him in the middle. Lopez is going to give way to Elia Pipoli. Eric Dyer now picks... Oh, he does not pick up a yellow card. Okay, Olmedo with the ball. Plays it out to Mafio. Finally, we see the wing back coming up. And Pipioli strikes the upright. Okay, that's the first time I've seen a play that involves somebody breaking into space down a flank to try and score a goal. Mafio, he's uh, tackled hard. Uh, they get away, but they can't get past Webster, Lukaku. Now, all three of my central the, the midfielders have picked up a cut. This is not good news. Mafio tries to stop Moha. Lukaku hits that. Philip Anderson, what a double save from Jack Butlin. I'm, I can't give a Mafio a uh, tackle harder. It's just too risky at the moment. So we're going to have to play with uh, the players on the pitch now. Um... There's, there's a part of me that says I need to bring off uh, Colado or Olmedo because my ball-winning midfielders have all got yellow cards. Any tackle that they do right now is a dangerous tackle. Okay. And Germano finishes the match off. It's 2-0. Yes, uh, give Germano a free kick in and around the penalty box on the left side or here on in the center and he'll put it in and he does that again. Germano never misses with his right foot from that position. And we're two goals to the good. Uh, and we're going to see out this match now. We're going to stop this. We're going to go retain possession. And uh, yeah, the boys should be able to see out the game. We'll, we'll try something different in the second game. Uh, and we're going to try and see whether there's a... I can create more interesting goal variations. Because you can have plenty of attack variations in your system. Yes, 2-0. Uh, Gloucester City have beaten Spurs and continue the win. Now, I didn't make many changes to this tactic. Now, if you were to look at the system in the first half, uh, with and without the ball, 
I like to see how a tactic looks like uh, when we are playing. You can see how narrow the configuration is when we are attacking. We've got Almedo here. We've got Colado, but this is because we did change them around in the game. Uh, then we've got three. Without the ball, the boys look pretty compact. Uh, very compact, in fact. Uh, and uh, I would expect the, the possession uh, numbers to look quite solid for Gloucester City. In the first half, it looked like that. But it's time the second half. Uh, was done. We had controlled the pitch in the opponent's third. Uh, the kind of shots that we produced, uh, shots off target, you can see Gloucester City, in spite of uh, the first half, we had a few shots like this in and around the half. And then in the second half, really one wild shot over the top. Uh, then uh, shots that hit the woodwork. In this, We had one here, very close. Shots that were saved by the keeper, quite a number from the right side of the pitch. And I wonder who that who that who those attempts came from but you can see most of the attempts on the goal were all in the first half so we got to try something different in the next game and uh while we we did create it's not the total number of shots that we create but i'm more interested in the kind of shots that we created so sometimes what i do is I, you know you watch the highlights like this is from a free kick right uh into the box and we had one shot at goal and it's always good because sometimes these highlights they, you don't see this in the you don't see this in the game itself or you may have seen it in the game and you don't don't recall what kind of chances you may have created this is again another shot great chance that we had with Almedo uh, with Colado bursting in which is a result in me changing a lot of the chances that a few of the chances fell to Colado and we have to consider the fact whether or not we need to change uh, between him and uh Positions between him and Olmedo, yes, Olmedo and Colado. They have to swap. All right. So the boys came out okay. It was not a bad performance. It's not a bad tactic. I didn't have to make many changes to PIs and TIs. Uh, I rather remove some of the PIs, like the tackle harder PIs. I know they're necessary for some parts of this tactic to work, but I think that um, it's a risk with some teams and then um, the other thing I would could be watching out for would be yellow cards to this group of players so your bench strategy has to be lots of central midfielders uh, the other thing here is those are shots exploit the middle makes the tactic attack one dimensionally through the middle sometimes I rather I rather remove that shot and go work ball into box then I can get these full backs involved in play and you're going to get these four mini midfielders as well punk, uh, you know parking in front of the in front of the AI um it's we've got higher tempo as well mm, okay uh i don't know i don't i don't really like higher tempo uh, because it kind of messes uh rhythm up sometimes but on the whole i wouldn't change too many pis and ti's in this game i would just like you know for me i'm going to try in the next game i'm going to try slightly differently in the next game and I, i'm quite curious to see what would happen here in this game we didn't change too much and the next game i'm going to change a bit more and see whether i can make this system uh play to the strengths of my own team. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the FM Tactics. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. You can always look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to fmcom my website. We have other shows on this channel that I'm, I've done in response to questions I've gotten on Patron and on the forums and even here. So the, the whole goal of these is to help people see if there's a different way to play the game. Uh, and uh, I also done a. There's also a new show out called Glory Glory England, where the first our first guest is uh, Nick Madden from Sports Interactive, the QA of the Match Engine. Uh, he answers a lot of questions as well as to an approach, taking different approaches to the game. He has got a very unique approach, which is uh, he believes in letting roles play their way uh, to success. So you know you cho choose the right roles for your place and let them get on with the business of scoring goals and it's fantastic so if you have any questions uh please uh, drop me a note on twitter at bustanet or addicted to fm.com my website once again i'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this show and this channel and everything that you've done for me in the past i truly appreciate it so you guys have a good one take care i'll see you soon Bye bye